Hello everyone, in this video, we are going to cover the developments that have taken place in corporate governance, uh, what are the driving forces of the corporate governance, what are the risks involved in poor corporate governance, what is a poor corporate governance, and what's, uh, what have been the development and reporting of corporate governance, whether it is being followed or not followed, etc. So let me start with the driving forces of corporate governance. The most important one of those things is internationalization and globalization of the world economies. The countries are now linked to each other. People can invest in different countries because of more globalization. Uh, many businesses are there who are working uh, as an online business only who, who have a business of online trading etc so they can approach international markets so there is much more globalization and internationalization nowadays therefore there is a need that people should be knowing how is a business being worked how is it running what are the procedures of its working what are the mechanisms what is the framework uh, of that business and whether uh, it will make more easier for a person to make a decision whether he should invest or not in a certain business. So basically, uh, one of the aspects international internationalization globalization, differential treatment of domestic and foreign investors. We have discussed this aspect because they both are linked with each other. Uh, financial reporting because many things are dependent upon uh, what is happening as a part of poor corporate governance financial reporting will not be accurate because there would be self interests of those governing the business in their favor we'll discuss an example when we uh, in the next slide when we go for the features of poor corporate governance how do they manipulate the financial reporting and uh, therefore there is a requirement of independent audit committees uh, independent directors who will make sure that financial reporting is according to the international standards uh, which will enable an investor to find out about a company's operations and its performance whether it is accurately reported and whether should I invest in the company or not the significant influence of those governing and high profile corporate scandals which have resulted in uh, more requirement of applying more CCD uh, because uh, as a part of best practice one needs to ensure that there is uh, no issues of integrity and all things monitored and uh, the reports and feasibilities are being taken care of uh, and further that the reports, the agencies, uh, the, and the decisions on investments, the working is being done in quite a detailed way, therefore to avoid any scandals in future. For example, let me give you an example that if the board is being governed by, of a bank for example, is being governed by a family and therefore in order to give themselves a favor the family allows an LC without any collateral a huge LC without any collateral to a specific person it's just an example not a real life example although it is also available but that would not be a global example so therefore I'm avoiding it uh, uh, the, it's, the board is governed by the family and it allows opening an LC, a huge LC, without receiving any collateral as a security from a buyer. The buyer is linked with the family, therefore they allow the breach of law or rule. So what will happen? What happens next? For example, that the buyer receives his product and refuses to pay goes into default but as a result the bank's reserves also go down the bank goes in losses and ultimately it's unable to pay back its depositors 
So, therefore, all the stakeholders are going to suffer. Therefore, when they all suffer, the one feels the need of certain good practices to avoid any scandals and avoid any financial reporting malfunctioning. So, therefore, the governments or have uh, created some prepared some rules and regulations for different sectors and especially for the companies uh, like banks and listed companies to follow those rules. Now we come to what are the features of a poor corporate governance. Usually it is dominated by a single person, uh, no individual or independent reviews, there is lack of involvement of board and if there is a board, usually it is family oriented and there are no independent uh, members, no independent members and lack of adequate control function and that means that there would be no or weak audit committees uh, there would be lack of supervision of everything, there would be lack of independent scrutiny. For example, there would be no remuneration committee. Remuneration committee that may decide the director's uh, payments and uh, the perks and benefits. The director would be the sole decision maker of his own benefits, whether it goes in favor of the company or uh, in, in not in favor of the company, there will be lack of contact with the shareholders, emphasis of short term profitability instead of long term sightedness, just to make sure his own benefits should increase on that term, misleading accounts and information because uh, just to favor their own benefits. I'll give you an example, a very good example in a question here. We'll solve it together. TechPoint PLC is a medium sized public limited company that produces a range of components used in the manufacture of computers. The board of directors consists of chairman, chief executive and finance director all of whom are siblings, family members. right? There are five other unrelated executive directors. All directors receive bonuses based on sales, but they all are executive directors. No independent non-executive director who is not working in daily operations so that he can make an opinion independently upon the company's performance. So, the company's sales are made by individual salesmen and women. No segregation of duties. No SOPs. Each of whom have the authority to enter the company into contracts unlimited in value without the need to refer to a superior consult with other departments. It is this flexibility the company that has enabled the company to be very profitable in past years. However, a number of bad contracts current year have meant that the finance director reclassed them as cost to maintain healthy sales. Therefore, once again, misleading financial information. Why? Because if uh, a number of bad contracts are there in the year, they should be reported as they are. The, the, the accounts should not be altered or misleading just to protect the bonuses of directors. So all these issues that we discussed are corporate governance issues uh, resulting in bad performance and misleading of information to all the stakeholders and this all what will that result to if you give high bonuses which were not basically entitled for the directors will you will pay the directors that will result in negative cash flows and that will result and deferment of salaries, further deferment of suppliers payments. Therefore, a company will start going into vicious circle of uh, bad performance consistently. So in order for the well-being of the company, this should be avoided and proper functions should be enforced. Risks of a poor corporate governance, just we have discussed an example, clearly the ultimate risk is of making such a log organization bankrupt. Organization may also be closed down as a result of serious regulatory breaches.
what are the reports, the number of reports that have been produced nowadays. One of them we will discuss them later as well is that companies have to issue a statement of their compliance with the CCGs that whether they have complied up to what extent they have complied if there is any miscompliance and these statements are also audited just like normal financial statements by an external auditor external auditors further the statement of the directors uh, their profile what they do and all that and the total detail of their remunerations and uh, total detail of all the committees and governing bodies like audit committee uh, remuneration committee HR committee etc so all these things disclosures are nowadays required in an organization uh, in different organizations I think uh, and this is one of the questions you, you will solve themselves just to reinforce your learning in this subject um, uh, however uh, okay we can go for it in most countries what is the usual purpose of course of practice of corporate governance we discussed rules versus principle based approach uh, however in most countries what happens is to establish legally binding requirements no because the, uh, the rules are not all the time enforced to set down details rules to regulate there are certain rules to regulate, but the uh, the the not only the rules which I will regulate, uh, because there there is a set of principles for most of the companies to follow. Rules are only for the big or listed companies to so provide a guidance on standards of the best practices. This is it. To so provide a comprehensive framework for management. This is it. The best practices to be followed is for the CCG. So I think this is it for this uh, section. Thank you very much. Goodbye, take care till the next video where we will be covering the role of the board of directors. Till then take care, goodbye.